Today I want to talk about my camera collection. I have quite a few cameras. I counted them up last week. I came up with 20. The first one I want to talk about is an oddball camera. This is a Graflex, the Graphic 35. And it's kind of an oddball camera because the way it focuses. You don't have like a ring on the front that you focus. What you have is these two knobs right here. You push one and you push the other. And that's how it focuses. I've never used it. This is kind of a neat camera. I'm keeping it in my collection because it's an oddball. It has a beautiful leather case. And when you look through the viewfinder, it's a trashy little viewfinder. Not a very good viewfinder at all. But it's a neat camera and I like having it in my collection. The next camera that I want to talk about is from Germany. This is Ihagi. It's an Exacta 500. And I've never really used it. I don't really like the way it fits in your hands. But the amazing thing about this camera is the lens. This lens is Carl Zeiss Jenna Biotar. It is a very nice lens. It's an f2. Very sought after lens. It's kind of an oddball and it took me a long time when I first acquired this camera. How do you change your f-stops? The aperture ring did not work at all. It didn't didn't move and I couldn't figure out what to do. Later on I found out the trick is you push down like this and then it will move. Took me a long time to figure that out. So I like having this oddball camera. It's made in Germany. The camera company was in Dresden, Germany. If you study about World War II, near the end there was firebombing of Dresden. That city was obliterated by bombings. So the camera factory was wiped out. So after World War II, it took quite a while for um, things to resume, for production to resume. But anyhow, this is in my camera collection and it's a really neat camera. Okay, I have another oddball camera. This is an oddball because I've never heard of this brand. This is called Iloka and it's a 35 millimeter. It's a, not a real high quality feel. It just has kind of a cheap feeling. It's light. Uh, it says Iloka Rapid, one, Rapid A1. Um, just kind of simple. The lens there says Cassar 2.8 45 millimeter and the winder is broken. I don't know what's going on with this winder. It doesn't wind right. I don't want to spend any money to get it repaired. And so this is kind of just like a shelf uh, shelf queen. Sit on the shelf and look pretty. The viewfinder, very small. Uh, does have a nice leather case, so it's got that good a point to go for it. There it is. Got the leather strap, leather case. And it's an oddball camera. Maybe you have one. Maybe you know all about it. There it is. Iloka. Next in my camera collection, I have this old uh, camera case here with a bunch of interesting items. Uh, this is a Zeiss Icon folding camera. Anyhow, uh, it's a folding camera. So what we're going to do is just push this button right here and pull it. There it is. It comes out and it locks. It's a neat little camera. Uh, so nowadays we're used to you just push the shutter, click, and it takes a picture. But this is an older camera. You have to cock the shutter. First you cock the shutter and then you release. So anyhow, um, it's got a beautiful lens on there. It's a neat camera and it folds right up. If you push right here, it's going to fold up again. Click. Um, this one, the gentleman I acquired it from, it looks like he really liked this camera and when it broke he refurbished something. So there's a part here on the bottom. It looks like he made himself out of plastic, this spool that somehow got lost. Um, Zeiss Icon has a very good name these days. It's a, it's a brand name that people recognize. This lens here says Novar Anastigmat F. Uh, it's a F. 3.5 it's a 45 millimeter and then it says Prontor that's the shutter so they're advertising the shutter and the lens beautiful camera um, I had a, a similar one that I used a little bit this one I have not used uh, it says on the back Zeiss Icon Stuttgart made in Germany Stuttgart so there it is and 
what else is in this case? I have an old Kodak. This thing is kind of interesting. It's um, kind of a cheap feeling kind of camera. It says Kodak Automatic 35F. And it has a few adjustments on it. It has a thing here to put a flash bulb. So if you push this over, you get a flash bulb be put in. Kodak made a lot of cheap cameras for mass production. And if you study about George Eastman who started Kodak, his thing that he invented that was an amazing invention was roll film. His first camera was uh, selling for $25, but later he came up with a $1 camera, the Brownie. You sent the whole camera back and they would, at Kodak, open up the camera, take out the film, develop the film, put in a new roll and send it back to you. George Eastman and his Kodak company found out that the way to make money is make something cheap so that just about everybody in the world can buy one. But what Kodak also did in the 1930s is they bought a camera company in Germany and they now were introducing the Retina cameras. There was a Retina 1 and a 1A and a 2 and a 2A and a 3 and a 3A and a 3B and a 3C and guess what? There was two 3Cs. There was a big C and a little C. So what I'm holding in my hands right now is the Retina 3C, the small C. Beautiful leather case and it's a 35 millimeter camera. This is the same type of deal where you're gonna fold it out. See that? Click, it folds out. So that makes it a little bit smaller so you can carry it around with you. Beautiful camera, and uh, if you guys ever watched Mr. Rogers when you were little kids, Fred Rogers had one of these. It was a, a Retina 3C. I never saw any episodes of them with it, but that's kind of an interesting factoid for you. So you push these two buttons right here, it folds back up, and you know why I still have this camera? So it's missing the lens, a little tiny thing that goes in there. That's why I still have it in my collection and I haven't been able to use it. And I'm not sure if I really do want to spend money on finding the lens and getting it, but it's a great camera. And I used to have the 1A and the 2. I had uh, like four or five of these retinas and I really liked them. I went out and shot some film with them. It was a slow process because you have to look through the viewfinder, figure out how far it is, set the focus, then you have to cock the shutter, then you have to advance the film, and then you release the shutter. And when I was shooting with that a couple of years ago, I would take the picture and then I would turn the camera like this, like I was gonna look at the back and see the image. No, nope, no image to see you there. Okay, I got one more, in, I look at this, I have two more parts of a retina cases, so those are bits and pieces. So, okay, so here's the last one I'm gonna show you from this box. This is medium format. This is an interesting camera. The uh, case looks like the previous owner fixed it up. This is a, not a 35 millimeter, this is a medium format. It's called a uh, Ventura Solet 3, made in Germany. And it is an Agfa camera, same type of deal. It's got the, uh, there it is. It's got bellows, see that it folds up. These bellows look like they were glued up, so it's leather, and leather dries out and cracks, and when it cracks, you get holes in it, and when you get holes in it, you get light leaks. But anyhow, it's a neat camera, so for, thir for um, medium formats, I only have two in my collection right now. I have this, and I'm going to show you another one that I have that is a Japanese camera. It's a TLR, Twin Lens Reflex. So let's go get that. Meanwhile, I'll shut up this case. Next, we're gonna talk about this camera. This is medium format, twin lens reflex. It's not a Roly. It's a Japanese copy of a Roly. Roly Flex and Roly Cord were very beautiful cameras made in Germany. At one point, I had a nice Roly Cord. I was a young guy. I was married. I had no children. I bought it for $125 in a Nice little camera shop I went in in Hackensack, New Jersey. I went back the next day and bought it. I used it a few years, took some very nice pictures with it. And later on, when I had three little kids and I needed money for diapers and shoes and groceries, I sold that camera and a few others. I had an Olympus Pen F, a half frame camera and a few others. I uh, met a guy who was from Japan. He was going back to Japan. He wanted to take some vintage cameras with him and. He made me a good deal and I sold him a bunch of cameras and bought groceries. You pull it out here, there's your viewfinder. Take off the lens cap and you look down through here and it has a sports finder. So if I pop this over here like this, there's a little square 
and that's my sports finder. When I look in here, the image is mirror reversed. The left is on the right, the right is on the left. When I was in high school, they gave me a camera like this to belong to the photo club, and they say, here, go take some pictures of the basketball team for the yearbook. And the guys are running up and down the court with their basketball, and I'm looking in there, and it's backwards. So it's very hard to follow the action until your brain starts to uh, be able to process things backwards. So I used one of these in high school a little bit. When I was a young guy without any kids, I bought myself a Rolly, sold it, kind of regret it, but hey, things are things. And I like to say the most important things in life are not things. It's not a German, it's a Japanese, but they did a really nice job of uh, reverse engineering a Rolly and making their own. I have not shot any film with this thing yet, but I love it. It has a really solid feel, and there it is. Okay, right now we're gonna talk about the oldest camera in my collection. I got this about maybe two or three years ago. I picked it up at a yard sale. When I first looked at it, I said how much, and they wanted like 20 or $25, and I passed. I bought a couple other items, and as I was leaving, I said, would you take $5? And they said, yeah, go ahead, take it. So there it is. It's a Kodak Brownie 2A. This is a box camera. This is what George Eastman was making for the masses. So the average Joe on the street could go out and buy one of these, probably $2, $3, something like this, and they could have a camera. It's not quality, there's not a quality lens, not a quality shutter. Uh, the negative would be this size right here. Um, it was made to capture the family thing. So people would take these to the picnics in the summer. They take some pictures on the 4th of July. They take pictures at a few uh, birthday parties and Christmas and one roll of film might last one whole year. But there it is. And I do have a video on YouTube also, how to clean vintage cameras. This camera's in there, because uh, when I, in the video, this thing was all covered with dust and I was cleaning it off. I think this is probably from about 1920. Not really sure, but it's pretty neat. Some people like to have these just on their shelf as a collector's item. So it's kind of nice to have in my camera collection. All right, now let's talk about collecting vintage cameras that I really like. I really focus in on these. Canon 35 millimeter single lens reflex cameras. Because that's where it all started for me when I was 15 years old. I bought myself a camera. I had money from working at the grocery store. I saved up and I bought a camera for $219. Look at this box. What's it say? Canon. And let's look inside and see what's here. Let's pull out a camera. There's one. What do you have there? It's a Canon FTB. FTB, really nice camera, had a lot of features. The shutter speed went up to a thousand. This one has a neat lens on it. This is a Canon um, FD 135 F 2.5. It's an SC lens. And there it is, beautiful. When you feel this camera zoom, you can just feel it's a quality thing. This is a camera made with glass and metal. This is thick leather. That's a leather case. So that's one right there. Let's dig a little deeper and see what else is in the box. All right. FT. This one doesn't have a lens on it, but the one I just showed you is FTB. So FT was a pretty neat camera, but then they added a few features and then they made the FTB. There it is. I have a body cap on there. So I like that sound of the shutter. What else is inside the box? Oh yeah, look at that one. Canon FTB. This guy is the black surface. Black is a little bit more desirable for collectors. Uh, back when these cameras were sold new, they usually charged $20 extra for the black finish. So it's got this really nice leather case. This is thick leather. I really like this camera. Um, one little defect with it, there's something missing here on the uh, wheel. But it has a neat lens. This is the old lenses they call chrome nose. And this is a 50 millimeter 1.8 FL series lens. Let's hear that shutter. Oh yeah. All right, what else is in that box of Canon goodies? Oh yeah, there it is. Canon TX, this is where it all started when I was 15 years old. This one's in really nice condition and it's not the one that I bought when I was a kid. The one that I bought, I used for decades. I used it in the 1970s, the 1980s, the 1990s. And finally around the uh, new century of the millennium, 
I retired it because one time I was backing up my car and I ran over my camera bag and it kind of messed up that camera. Then eBay was pretty new. And I looked up and bought one and I bought this. I bought this on eBay for like $35 or some ridiculous low amount. And I was like, wow. And I thought, I'm going to buy more and more and more and more. So that's kind of where my camera collecting started. The Canon FTB was a really popular camera. So they tried to make like a stripped down version of it. And that's what the TX was. The shutter speed only went up to a 500th. And this is not the um, self timer. This is just a stop down lever. And listen to that shutter. That's at a 250th of a second. We're going to slow it down a little. Hear that? Nice simple camera, glass and metal. Really happy with the one I got when I was a kid. This is a nice replacement for it. It's a Canon EOS 630. And I used to use this for weddings. Now I've put it away, took the battery out. You don't want a corroded battery in there. It gets old and it can uh, ooze out all kinds of yucky acid and stuff. But today for this video, I took it out. There it is. I used to shoot a lot of weddings with this. The lens is a 28 to 80 millimeter, so you get quite a bit of range. I also used to use a couple zoom lenses I had in my bag. For portraits, I went to a larger lens. When I upgraded to this, you put the film in, you shoot, every time you press it, shutter goes, it advances the film to the next roll. When it gets to the end, it re -rolls, rewinds the roll of film into the cartridge. I kind of miss it. Maybe one of these days I'll put the battery back in and go shoot some pictures with it. And uh, remember those good old days. Shot a lot of weddings with this camera. And after this, um, I had an uh, EOS 10 before that. I used it a little bit, didn't like it. I went to the 630. Is a very reliable camera. If you look up the reviews, they really did like this camera a lot. From this, I went to the EOS 1, and then I went to the EOS 1N, and then I went digital. So this is the one of the last film cameras that I was using as a working camera, not just monkeying around on weekends. But this is really the core of what I really like, is the cameras from the 70s. Glass and metal made in Japan, 35 millimeter, single lens reflex. Inside this box, I have a few more lenses. This is a um, Canon FD 24 millimeter, and this is um, a 2.8, and it has red lettering on there, SCC. Those are very desirable lenses. In here, I also have a 2x converter. I never really got into these too much, so you put it on your camera and it doubles the image. But I always felt like I was losing image quality. But I have one of those. Um, this lens here is a Vivitar Canon mount. It's a 70 to 210. It's not a fast lens. It's an f4.5. So not a real fabulous lens. This is not a really great lens either. This is a Canon. It's a 70 to 150. But it's not a real fast lens. This is... Um, f4.5. Kind of neat though, it's got a, a, a hood there, retractable hood. That's a nice little lens. And this is very similar. This is another one. Um, this is a Canon FD 200mm f4. Kind of a small lens. I've used this a few times. I was not really uh, excited, kind of disappointed. I have a lot of birds in my backyard. You might have heard them tweeting. Tried to take pictures of them. Wasn't really pleased with the quality. I have a converter so that I can use the FD lenses on my uh, digital EOS camera. And that's pretty neat. So I got a lot of use out of it. I was never really pleased with my results. I have another converter that I can use the Minolta lens. And I wasn't really excited about what I have. This one I picked up at Goodwill. $25. There was a guy looking at it right before me. He looked at it and he said, no, nah, I don't want it. So I said, let me take a look at it. Canon mount, which is what I needed. Uh, it's not a Canon lens. It's a Canon mount. Soliger, kind of an interesting company. Soliger is German, but it was also manufacturing in Japan and selling in America. So it was like a, a triangulation of Germany, Japan, and the USA. Uh, kind of a neat lens. I used it a little bit. Um, it is a 4.5, 75 to 260 millimeter. I made a video a few years ago with my Canon EOS, I think it was a 60D. Put this camera on it, 
and I shot some video and it had a great blown out background and I kind of liked it. Now it's interesting too that it has the tripod connector here so when you put it on the tripod you're going to be mounting this lens and the camera. You don't just mount the camera because it's if you just have the camera on the tripod it's going to be top heavy so that's kind of nice. I think I got 25 bucks worth out of it. So I have one more lens I'm going to show you in this little box right here. This one's in the box and it is a nice lens. This is a Canon. It's FD, FD mount. No, FL. I'm sorry, FL mount. It's a 135 2.5 and I remember buying this. I bought it for $20. I bought it in like 1999 or 2000. At that time everybody was going digital and nobody wanted these old lenses and there was a camera shop that had a little bit of used equipment and I was looking at it and the guy was like, "Nah, what are you wasting your time on that for? Eh, 20 bucks. So I bought it and um, it's a really nice lens. I really like it. I put it on my EOS 60D and 70D and shot video with it and I really like it. This is a really nice lens. I do like using it. So that one goes in the green box. What else is in the box? I have a lot of lens caps. Lots of front lens cap, back lens cap, body caps. And then this is the Canon box. Why is this in there? That's not a Canon. It's the uh, Super Tacomar. The reason I have it in there is it has the converter on there. This is a screw mount lens, but I have the converter so I can use it on my modern Canon EOS 60D and 70D that I shoot with and it, you get some pretty nice results with this. This is in the box too. It's a remote switch. I got it secondhand, tried to sell it, nobody was interested. There's something else in this box too. Manuals. Look at all these Canon manuals. This is for the uh, Speedlight and this is a little bit beat up but it's pretty neat. The Canon EOS 1 manual. I don't have the Canon EOS 1 in my collection right now, but let me tell you about that camera. Uh, I told you I had a Canon TX, and I shot a few weddings on that in the late 90s. And that was not easy because it's uh, manual focus, manual exposure. You had to click and wind, click and wind. I did a few weddings with that, and I said, no, this is not working. So I upgraded to a Canon EOS 630. When I put on the Canon flash, the flash and the camera communicated with each other and I was like in hog heaven because I didn't have to go and set my f-stops anymore. Whatever I focused on I pushed my shutter down halfway and the lens and the flash would communicate with each other they would put the optimal setting and bam I take my picture and that Canon EOS 630 had auto wind so after I took the picture I didn't have to use my thumb and go wind wind and I shot with that for a while and then I upgraded to the uh, Canon EOS 1 and that was a tank. It's a professional camera. It's very heavy. It's sealed so it resists uh, moisture and dust. I actually had two of them because when you're shooting weddings if something goes wrong you just want to be able to reach over in your other bag grab your other camera and keep going and that did happen to me one day. Bride's coming down her father's walking around the aisle click nothing happened. The camera was locked so I just calmly reached in my bag grabbed my alternate camera, click, got it, never missed a beat. And I never bought any of them brand new. At that time, you know, that was like maybe 2004 or something like that. It was an $1,800 camera if you went to buy it brand new. I don't have a lot of cameras in my collection and that's one camera I'm thinking I might like to have again. All right, the next camera I'm gonna talk about is the Pentax SP. This one says SP500 on it. Later on, they changed the name over to Spotmatic. They also made a simpler version, stripped down, aimed at high school students and people learning photography called the K1000. And right now, K1000 is a very popular camera with young people. This one says Honeywell Pentax. Some say Asahi Pentax, and some say Honeywell. So Asahi was the Japanese company. Honeywell is a company in America, in Minneapolis. They made thermostats. And for some reason they thought making thermostats and importing cameras was a good uh, business model. So they slapped their name on it. This is a Honeywell Pentax SP. And it's a beautiful camera. I really like it. Listen to that shutter. I love it.
that's a 500th of a second. This only goes up to a 500th of a second. And the lens on here is a very nice lens. This is the uh, Super Tacomar 1.8, 55mm. Uh, these are also, I believe they are radioactive. There's thorium in there. And I was selling stuff on eBay. I sold one of these on eBay. And when I shipped it to people, I was like, I'm going to cross my fingers that I don't get in trouble because the box is radioactive. Uh, but it, it went through. I didn't have any problem with the radioactive thing going through the mail. But it's not a really high radioactive. It's very small. If you have your own Geiger counter at home, you can check it out. Um, they're kind of neat because the reflection on the front at a certain angle is kind of a yellowish tint. And I used to have a lot of these. I'm down to my last one. And I'm going to keep it. It's got a neat case. This isn't leather. This is when they started cheaping out those old Canon cameras from the 60s had the leather cases. Then all the companies started going over to this kind of cheap plastic, uh, some kind of imitation leather. But it's got kind of a neat inside. It looks like some kind of like blue velvet. So that's kind of nice. So I have that. It doesn't have a strap on it. Neat item. It just converts it. This is thread mount. So um, before they come, camera companies came up with bayonet mount, this is thread mount. And to take it off, you can screw it, screw it, screw it, screw it, screw it, screw it. So it takes a while to get it off and on. And if you get it too tight, that can be trouble. So later on, one of the companies, I'm not sure if it was Canon or Nikon or who it was, they said, let's make, let's make a bayonet mount where you put it in and you just turn it a little bit and it's locked down. And when I was just putting this on, I was looking for the red dot some camera companies have a white dot it doesn't have the dot you just put it on and, and turn it in so that's a little bit older technology i believe this is from about 1965 if you look at pictures of the beatles around 1965 or so they started making money and what did they do they all went out and bought cameras i have a really neat picture somewhere of ringo star with one of these all right so next we're going to go over to minolta all right what do i have next a minolta box there it is. It's full of Minolta. I'm somewhat organized with my camera collection. I got them in these boxes. I like having the box because it keeps the dust out. And you know, somebody told me that what's the difference between a hoarder and a collector is hoarders have stuff laying all over the place unorganized. So I'm not a hoarder. I'm a collector. You got proof right there. See, I got a box. All right, so let's go through the contents of this box right here. An SRT 101. Nice camera, very solid. This has shutter speeds that go up to one one thousandth of a second. And I really like the lens that's on this one. The lens here is a 58 millimeter 1.4. It's a MC Rokor PF. I um, really like the lens, really like the camera. Look at this little, they put a little uh, plastic um, or rubber little tip on the winder handle. That's classy. And um, one reason why I like this camera is when I was a teenager, I got interested in photography and I wanted to buy myself a 35 millimeter single lens reflex camera. And my brother let me test out his to use for a week or so. And he had one of these, SRT 101. He bought it at the PX when he was in the army. He was in Germany, went in the PX and bought himself a nice camera. The GI's got a nice discount and he used that camera for many years. He raised four kids. They took a lot of pictures of the kids growing up. And one day in the garage with the cement floor, somebody dropped it and it hit like this and it dented the pentaprism and they stopped using the camera. And for a while I was buying and selling a lot of cameras on eBay. So I bought him one. And when I went to the family reunion, I said, hey, I got a surprise for you. And I gave him a, an SRT 101 with the lens. And uh, it was kind of neat that I could help him out like that. So what else is in here? Well, it's a Canon SRT 101, no lens on it. It's a Canon SRT 101, no lens on it. So I've got three of them with one lens to kind of share. I've also got uh, a manual for Rokar lenses. And I have a manual for the, another camera, which I don't own. It's a Canon XG1N. So if somebody wants to trade me, I'll trade you this for a lens for one of my Minolta SRT 101s. I have a body cap here and I got a, a rear lens cap for a Minolta. Uh, I have a kind of a quirky lens hood. It's a, it's a UV filter and lens hood, kind of neat. And then I have this wacky thing. This is very interesting. So you can mount this on your telephoto lens and then look through it and you can use it like a monocular 
or like a spotting scope. And uh, just kind of a quirky little thing that I found somewhere. So that's the Minolta box. The last camera that I want to talk about today is not a real fancy camera, not a real high-tech camera, not a really old camera, not a really valuable camera. But to me it's very valuable because you know whose camera this was? This belonged to my mother. And I have pictures of me as a baby laying on a blanket. I'm a few months old and she took them with this camera. She uh, probably bought this in like the 1940s. When she passed away, I inherited this camera. It's got kind of a neat Art Deco look to it. See those gold lines in the front? And you can shoot it this way, you can shoot it that way. It took a 620 film, so the big negatives like that. And this camera's a bit beat up and it's old, but it's a very treasure to me. I keep it prominently displayed with my other cameras and I'm very proud to have it. So there it is. This is a Kodak Target Brownie 616 made in the USA. All right, thank you very much for watching. Tune in later, I'll have more videos about film photography. Bye now. That's not the Canon EOS 630. That's my digital 60D, so I'm gonna have to erase that. But So that's one right there. Whoops. Uh, 